All right, guys, we're going to be adjusting the valves on a EJ25. This is the typical 2.5 liter uh, single overhead cam that's in most Subarus today. So this came out of a 2003 Subaru Legacy that just now got the head gaskets replaced on it. I'm getting ready to put the engine back inside the vehicle, but first I wanted to go ahead and adjust the valves while the engine was out. But you can also adjust the valves while the engine is in the vehicle and it'll be perfectly fine. So let's get to it. So first off, you can see I've already got the timing cover off and I've got the valve covers off too. So hopefully, if you're going to be doing this job, you know how to get the timing cover off and the valve covers off. I went ahead and put the dampener back on because there's no, I don't have a washer or anything else like that size to fit around this center bolt and I don't want to be tearing up the thread. So I went ahead and put the dampener back on so I can turn the engine over. And we're turning the engine over because the manual states specifically that we have to line up the crank in just a way so that each valve that we're going to be adjusting for each cylinder, that piston must be at top dead center on the compression strip. So that means that the valves are not having any tension whatsoever whenever we're setting it. Now a common mistake that most people do whenever they're trying to adjust the valve is that they're using the wrong marks to know what top dead center is. Well this mark here is literally just used so you can set the timing for your timing belt. Because whenever you have this straight up and down, and you have the uh, crank centered up and this one over here, you have this one centered up with that mark there too. That just means all the pistons are not going to be interfering with the valves whenever you're trying to set the timing. What you want to use is the arrows that's on both of the camshaft pulleys. So this one's pointing straight up and this one's pointing straight up too. That lets me know that cylinder number one is at top dead center. And since number one is straight up and down right here, so obviously this isn't straight up yet because I haven't set it yet, the next one is going to be cylinder number three which is the one right behind here, so you start with one, this is three. Pointing straight down is gonna be number two, which is the first one on this side over here. And this is gonna be number four, which you probably have guessed it already, is gonna be facing this way. Now before you start, you should make sure that you have the actual clearances for your engine. This happens to be a tag that's on the hood of the vehicle. And it lets me know that I need to do all the valve adjustments uh, whenever the engine's cold, and it gives me the specific specifications for what the valves should be set at. With the cam sprocket pointed straight up, I'm going to go ahead and check cylinder number one here. With the smallest size that the clearance calls for, which is 0.1 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and see if it'll slide in there. So that valve's good. Slides in there pretty easy. So there's this one, very minimal grab on it. I'm going to go ahead and check the exhaust, which it calls for a minimum of 0.15 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and check that real quick. And it seems to not hold that one at all. Let's see about this one. And this one seems very tight too. All right, so that means I'm going to go ahead and check the biggest size that it'll take here instead of the smallest one. So the intake won't take the largest one, which is good. Let's try this one here. That one won't go in. Let's go ahead and try the largest one for the exhaust. 0 0.30. Let's try that one. That one doesn't take it, neither does this one. So this one's way too tight, can't even fit the smallest size, which should have been known that I can't fit a bigger size in there. The intakes won't take a bigger size, but it also fits in between the specs. So these intake valves are actually good. I'm gonna try a random size right in the middle and see how it does. Just gonna go ahead and try just one in the middle here. It grabs it really hard at 0.15. Let's try it, yeah. 0.15. So these valves for the intake on cylinder number one are actually pretty good. I don't have to actually adjust these. But since I got to go ahead and get the exhaust valves because these ones are too tight, I'm going to start by loosening up the nut on the bottom here. So all you have to do is just loosen these up. They don't have to be super loose. I'm going to go ahead and just crack it loose. This one I've already got loose. And a good rule of thumb is, is using the smallest clearance size that it has on here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and stick it up on in there. And I'm going to adjust the nut that's on the middle here which adjusts the clearance in here. So I'm going to rotate it until it's just snug against the tightest size here, and then back it off just a little bit, and then I'm gonna hold it right where it's at, go ahead and get my rinse to put on there without moving the inside, and then hold the inside solid, and then just tighten that nut back. After you tighten the nut, you wanna go ahead and recheck and make sure the clearance it's still good. I have a little, I have a lot of play in there. It's not really grabbing too well. So I'm going to try the uh, biggest size that it can take. And it can't fit the biggest size. So that means my clearance is in the range where it should be. So now I need to adjust the other side. Again, starting with the smallest size here. 
It's got quite a bit of room in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down onto it. Pretty snug right there. I'm gonna keep it right where it's at. Go ahead and tighten this down. Keeping the middle right where it's at. Double checking it. She slides in there pretty good with a little bit of resistance on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the maximum size. maximum size it won't fit inside that one and it won't fit inside the other one so these valves are in spec of what the clearance says so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine over so I can do cylinder number three so that means that you just have to get the arrows to point at like a three o'clock right about there that's good so I'm going to go ahead and start on cylinder number three all right doing the same process that we were doing on the first cylinder here the intake valve will take the smallest size that it has, that one wheel two. Let's go ahead and check exhaust. Exhaust valve on this side, both of them easily take their smallest size. Let's go ahead and try the maximum size here. Maximum size for the intake, won't fit. That one won't fit. Let's go ahead and try the maximum size for the exhaust. That size won't fit. And that size won't fit either. So that means that this cylinder is already in spec and I don't actually have to adjust these cylinders. So as you can tell, it's really not that hard of a job to do as long as you have the fuel gauges and you have room to get to it. All you gotta do is just, again, try the smallest size, see if it fits, and if it does, move on to the largest size. If it does not fit the largest size, then you're good. You don't have to adjust it, even if you have to. It's not that hard of a job to do unless you don't have room to do it, which in the engine bay, it's kind of hard to do for some Subarus, but it is doable and it is worth it sometimes because you get better fuel economy and then most of the time you get better power whenever your clearances are actually set right. So as always, if you guys would like more videos like this, please subscribe.